In this video, we're gonna talk about using the air conditioning recovery machine. We'll talk about how to pull the refrigerant out, check for leaks, and then put that refrigerant back and check for operation. So I'm gonna start by plugging my machine into the wall and turning it on. We'll see that we get a screen that comes on on this particular machine. I also want to make sure that both of my panel valves are closed, and then I would carry on and connect both my hoses. I've already got these set up. These are pretty standard style of hose. So you utilize a collar, just like a pneumatic fitting that snaps on. When I put those on, I want to pull back and make sure it's on tight. And then I have to run this thumb wheel down, which engages the Schrader valve within the hose so that I've got flow going out to the machine. I do that for my low side, which is blue, and my high side, which is the red one right down there. With my hoses hooked up, I should see pressure on both sides. Depending on the state of my air conditioning system, these pressures might vary just a little bit. But with R134A, I should be pretty close to my ambient temperature for both of these pressures. So right now I'm reading about 76 or 77 PSI on both sides. And so that tells me that the refrigerant level in this truck should be pretty close to where it's supposed to be. If this reads low or high, that could make other indications as far as the refrigerant level. When a vehicle sits long enough, we do expect both sides to equalize like this. To start my recovery process on this machine, I utilize the screen. I've got some selections, uh, cursor movement here, enter, and another option. So I'm gonna go to recover. It tells me to open the panel valves, hit start, The machine at that point should turn on and we should see the pressure begin to drop and the scale within the machine will begin to register how much refrigerant has been removed. After the recovery process is done, we want to double check how much refrigerant came out. It looks like we got about 1.04 pounds out of the truck. And then we also want to look at the oil recovery bottle, which is over here on this side. This bottle was empty when we started. Um, if you do not empty it between every use, you want to double check what the level is before you start the recovery process so that you know how much oil came out with the refrigerant. This is important so that we can put back the same amount of oil whenever we go to charge the system later. So we recovered 1.04 pounds on this truck. And so we'd want to compare that with the specification. Most vehicles will have a sticker like this one that shows the type of refrigerant, the type of oil, as well as the capacity. And so on a truck like this, they're looking for 0.6 kilograms, which works out to about 1.32 pounds of refrigerant. And so we're pretty close to having what we should have, but it is a little bit low. So after recovering the refrigerant from the truck, we're learning that it is low on refrigerant at about 20% less than what the specification is. Our next step is going to be to look for leaks. And there are two different ways that we can accomplish that. So one of the ways that we can check for what leaks is to utilize a vacuum test. So I'm going to go back on my screen here, go down to vacuum and hit enter. It's going to verify that the pressures are low enough to conduct a vacuum test. The default time on this machine is to run the vacuum pump for 10 minutes. We're going to hit continue and I want to open both of my panel valves. When my 10 minutes is up, I want to close both of my panel valves and then wait and watch my vacuum level over time. Generally, we want to leave this for at least 10 to 15 minutes, if not longer, and see what the decay or loss of vacuum is through that time. So we've waited about 15 minutes and we have not seen any kind of vacuum decay at this point. There's been no change in that number. And so that's a good sign that the system is well sealed. That vacuum check is a great way to look for leaks initially before I go about checking for leaks with refrigerant in the system. The other purpose of putting the system through a vacuum is to remove moisture and remove contaminants from the system before I go about recharging it. Now that we've identified there are no gross leaks, we'll go ahead and charge the system and we'll go about some other checks. So we're gonna go down with our cursor to charge, hit enter. 
Here I can change the units, and so I can put it to kilograms and go on down and enter 0.6, just like the sticker on the vehicle says. I then hit next. Now is my time and my opportunity to inject the system with oil if I saw oil come out of the system. We did not see any oil get removed in this recovery process, and so we're going to skip that step today and hit continue. This machine begins by purging air from the system, and then we've got to open our valves to charge. Once I've charged my system the full amount, I get a beep to proceed to the next step. I'm gonna go ahead and close both valves. It's important to note as well that we're doing all this recovery and charging with the vehicle off. We do not wanna run the system if it's not got adequate refrigerant in it. This next step on the screen is going to allow me to equalize pressure in both hoses and then evacuate what refrigerant is left in the hoses. Because I wanna do a performance check and verify my operation, I'm gonna leave that on hold so that I can look at my gauge values with the truck running. Just turn the truck on. In a second, we should see the AC compressor go on. As the compressor kicks on, I see my low side get pulled down and we should stabilize back around that 30 PSI number. With the system charged, we can go about checking for leaks. A system that has been charged and at full pressure often is a little bit easier to check for leaks. And there's a couple ways that we can do that. One is that most refrigerant oils that we use in shop environments have ultraviolet dyes already added to them. So this PAG oil like this one is an example. This is the proper oil for this truck. And by its bright color, you can tell it's got a UV dye in it. That allows us to put that dye in the system during a service and then use a UV light, a black light, and some special goggles to help us find leaks more easily. The other check that we can do is just a visual inspection. Because of the nature of the oil within a refrigerant system like this, whenever there's a leak, oil tends to escape. That oil then attracts dirt and grime and usually causes a buildup. So in the case of a fairly substantial leak, we're gonna see that during a visual inspection. One of the common places for that to occur is the condenser. The condenser is the portion on the front of the vehicle. It looks like a radiator. It's pretty often damaged by rocks or road debris. And so looking through that condenser, checking for, kind of, checking for any kind of oil residue is a good first place to inspect. If my visual inspection doesn't yield any results, there's some other tools that we could use as well. One of those is this refrigerant leak detector. This one happens to be by Snap-on, but they're made by a variety of different companies. It uses a special sniffer type tool to look for absences of oxygen and the presence of refrigerant, and it emits an audible beep whenever we see a change. To use this tool, I'm gonna to start by turning it on. It first goes through this setting and free air calibration. The beeps will be a long pause, and then they'll go to a different, more steady beep after it goes through that process. Once I get that faster, steady beep, now I can go ahead and begin looking for leaks. Whenever we use this tool, we wanna to focus on places that have connections or things like the condenser that we talked about. And so any surface that's got an O-ring or a connection point, like where my expansion valve is here at the firewall, I wanna pay attention to hoses, where I go from a hard aluminum line to a crimp fitting at a rubber hose. All those are common places where I might have a leak. The other common place is something like the AC compressor. It's got a front seal. It generally has case sealing as well. Multi-piece cases often tend to leak and so I want to verify all those places. We're not finding a leak with this tool quite yet, and so I wanna show you what this looks like when it sees refrigerant. If we use the connection for the low side here, when we pop it off, there'll be a little bit of residue that comes out. And so that constant beep right there, it's seeing the refrigerant that came out when I released the hose. That trace amount of refrigerant was left just where the connection was, and so typical that I get a little bit there. That's something to think about when I go through doing my checks. The Schrader valve that's in that hose is something that could leak. I also wanna pay attention to how I take these hoses off as I can splatter some of that UV dye when that happens.
That's our basic process for using the AC recovery machine to pull the refrigerant out, verify the levels and how much was in the system, do our vacuum check and our vacuum process, as well as recharge the system and look for leaks. We didn't find any really prevalent leaks on this truck and it's likely because that level of 20% was a slow leak. And so it may be difficult to find that. We may need to know the last time the vehicle was charged and having some frame of reference for how long it took to lose 20% might help me with knowing how big the leak is. And so we need to do a little bit more investigation on this truck. The last steps that we haven't talked about are just how to wrap up utilizing the machine. With my hoses still connected and after having used the gauges for a performance check, there is refrigerant still in these lines. And so after I take this hose off and put it back on the machine, I'm gonna to have to run the evacuation process to pull the refrigerant out of these hoses. That's a good last step and a great best practice because I don't wanna have refrigerant left in these lines when I go to a new vehicle. That refrigerant could be purged back into the new vehicle and it may impact some of my diagnostics in the future.